So I visited China to attend Maker Faire Shenzhen 2025. So for those who don't know that Maker Faire Shenzhen is one of the world's biggest gathering of makers, developers, innovators and crazy DIY hackers. So if you love electronics, robotics or IoT or PC manufacturing or literally anything that involves building stuff for our electronics, well this is a Disneyland for you. So now let's dive into the most coolest and innovative things I found here and trust me, you will love it for sure. So let's explore. So on the day one, as I reached the destination, just like everyone else, I clicked a bunch of photos at the entrance and I also get to see my photo on the banner of the entrance. Now for those who don't know, this year Maker Faire Shenzhen invited a bunch of innovation ambassadors around the world which made this event a truly global makers gathering event. And I was one of the innovation ambassadors, hence you can see my photo with a bunch of other ambassadors. And not only that, they also celebrated innovation ambassadors by putting the photos of individual ambassador at different part of the event. I really like the concept. Well, anyways, let's move ahead with the event. So the first thing which I did before uh, exploring any store or projects, I attended a satellite event for FAN or you can say Fab Lab Asia Network. So in this event, the Fab Labs across Asia gathered and they all discussed about the innovations and the projects they have made in their maker spaces or they are currently working on right now. So this was a great way to stay connected with uh, everyone else and also to stay updated about the problems across Asia network and how makerspaces are dealing with the problems and coming up with the possible solutions. And after the presentations and discussions, we had a snack sharing session where people from different parts of Asia brought their local snacks to share with others. And after that, the event ended with bunch of group photos. So after attending the fan meetup on my way, I get to see bunch of workshops happening in parallel. Out of them, this one was creating AI projects using the Xiao es 0 S3 Sense board and the SenseCraft platform. And in the next room, we were having another workshop which was about teenage engineering workshop. And similarly, there were a bunch of other workshops happening in parallel in this two-day event. So next time we are coming to make a fresh engine, well, make sure to bring your laptop together because this event is not just for exploring the projects but also to learn new skills. But anyways, I didn't attend any of the workshops as I need to explore as many stalls as possible to get to see new and innovative projects and products. So let's explore. So at first I landed directly on the Seed Studio stall and they were having a lot of things to showcase. Now the first thing which I saw was the SenseCap Watcher running on Xiaoxi firmware. And it was not just programmed to chat with people but also programmed to be a product guide of the booth. Well, that was an amazing application of using such kind of AI assistant to assist all the people coming around your booth. And not only this, but during my visit to Chengdu, I found one coffee shop which was having the same SenseCap Watcher running the Xiaoqi AI firmware just outside the coffee shop and people can interact with that voice assistant and can ask anything about that coffee shop. Just like uh, what kind of drinks do they offer? Is it a hot or is it cold? Any Anything you can ask through that particular watcher and let me tell you this coffee shop was quite close to Chaiwo maker space in Chengdu so next time you visit the Chaiwo maker space or next time you're Chengdu well make sure you check this uh, coffee shop out it's really amazing anyways moving ahead with the seed studio stall then here I get to see a beautiful demo of home assistant where everything was monitored by this home assistant green and we got bunch of Xiao based boards out of them one was the Xiao es S3 Sense to do the live videos streaming on the platform. Another was a Xiao based millimeter wave board that can not just detect human presence but also the heart beat which was impressive. Later, we got an MP3 board which can play and pause the music with the help of this wireless IoT button. Moreover, we also got a soil moisture sensor for monitoring indoor plants. This was a beautiful representation of how we can use the Xiao board and home assistant to do the complete home automation. Now moving ahead, after C Studio, I landed up on the stall from M5 Stack. And at first, I get to see this huge Arduino Nesso N1. So now for those who don't know, then Arduino Nesso N1 is a new product and it's the first collaborative product between M5 Stack and Arduino and it's based on ESP32 6 And this tiny board is packed with a lot of tech inside it. So now let's hear from M5 Stack directly. 
So I didn't know this N1 is considered of ES Ether 2 C6. It's supposed for Wi-Fi, PRE, and ZGP, and Threads, and also for Meta 3. Uh, what's more, we have also have SX1262 inside, which means this support for LoRa. So that means the uh, Wi-Fi and both LoRa in these tiny size but powerful devices. And uh, surely you may find it. We have the reserve the different kind of the ports, like the group ports, like the quick port, and also for the Amphi stack, the head series. So we don't need the case. It band to all the other sensors and modules you are familiar with that. And uh, uh, what's more, we have the touch screen for this one. Uh, so this is the demo queue. We, uh, so you may have the Arduino logo that, And there's the rest of the onboard sensor like MU sensor, IR sensor, and, and, and the buzzers, and also the battery inside. Yeah. So yeah, today we have the, like uh, 10 times the demo for the Arduino Laser and one we have a lottery game here. So let's play with that. So that was all about the Arduino Nesso N1. And other than this product, on the M5 Stack booth, I get to see a bunch of other products. Out of them, I saw a big board with the QWERTY keypad, which was ultimately just a keyboard extension connected with the tap 5 from M5 Stack. After that, I get to see the card pewter ADV, which is advanced version of the regular card pewter. And in this, we can attach extensions as well. Like currently, it is attached with the LoRa extensions. And further, we can connect more modules like... Uh, so, we have like a CC1101, so which is like uh, the ARP radio. So, okay. this one can be used in the similar like a uh, flip zero. Oh, you can okay. play the, all the similar like application to flip zero. Wow. Super cool. And later, this time M5 Stack got a really interesting thing to attract a lot of visitors around their booth. So what they do is they will click your photo and later it will be generating your AI avatar which later they will print it on the t-shirt and give it to you. <laughs> really interesting. Now after M5 Stack, I landed up on the stall from CamThing who were showcasing their ultra low power AI camera. So this is their NE301 model and on the desk, I was able to see live streaming of the camera which was really low latency and completely wireless. But you may ask, what's the use of this product? So well, let's hear from the makers directly. For example, you have a pet on your home, okay. your home and you want, for example, you have a dog. Okay. If he's angry, it destroys your home. So you can put some days to this AI model and uh, let him know your when your dog is destroy your home. So he is captured this one and warning to you. Okay. And you can you know the dog is destroyed. So that's one of the many other use cases. So basically you can deploy any kind of AI model on this camera and let that you will get the trigger or alert based upon the model you have provided in it. And it's built for both indoors and outdoors as the case here is completely water resistant. Now the good part is, this team also gave me a review unit so soon on my channel I'll try to use this product and let you know how to use it and what kind of applications you can build on this product. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss out that video. Okay, so after cam thing, I'll end up on stall from VIGX who were showcasing their exoskeleton robot. Now this was the product which I have already seen on internet before coming to China and I was really excited to try that out. So I asked the team to help me out. And let me tell you, before trying this out, I thought it will be helpful product for those who have knee pains. But no, it doesn't help in that. Rather, it helps us to reduce the fatigue and help us to walk longer or faster as well. So now if I explain you how it feels then, it feels like someone is pulling our thighs which help us to walk without much effort. So it's a really good product for all the people who need to walk a lot in their daily routine and also for those people who need to lift heavy weights. Well, this product will definitely be very helpful. So now after covering the stalls from the brand, now let's cover some stalls from the makers. So at first, I landed up on the stall from Jacek from Poland and he got something really interesting and useful to showcase. So he basically made a platform called as FlashESP.com on which we can upload our code and share with others and people can compile and upload the code from that platform itself. So no more downloading Arduino ID or any of the softwares but that's not the coolest feature of it. Rather, it solves a really major problem, which I asked to Yacek. So, but okay. what if, if I have made a project mm -hmm. which requires a bunch of libraries? Yes, from, of particular versions. Mm -hmm. So how can I upload all these things here? Yes, I so don't... you can create a log file 
it's called libraries.log.json uh, okay uh, and this uh, file in this file you can specify what type of the version library you want to use with your project so that's the main issue that i wanted to solve with, with this uh, project okay so you can specify the versions of the libraries yeah. so if you specify the name it will search on internet for the library yes it will download it onto your platform yes wonderful and is this like free to use or what yes it's free to use it's fully free to use uh you can also like i said uh, make your vis uh, the you, you can specify the visibility of your project okay so you can make it public but you need to fill some description about this project uh, and once you will make it public, you can copy the link to this project. You can send it to the user. And once they log into the platform, they can click log into Flash and that's all. Isn't this super useful? Like no more compiling errors, no more downloading the libraries of a particular a version, nothing. Just upload your code with your library version on this platform and later all the viewers or the users will be able to replicate your code without any errors well it's really useful and i'm definitely looking forward to try this out and maybe i'll make a video about how to use this platform how to upload our code in it and does it support all kind of library or not well i'll, I'll try to put uh, like make a complete video out of it so stay tuned for that as well and now when i move ahead i get to see bunch of stalls from shenzhen InnoX. so now for many of you watching this video well shenzhen InnoX may be a new term for you so now let me explain what it is. So Shenzhen InnoX is kind of an incubation center for all the smart hardware companies. And here at MakerFest Shenzhen, they were having some of the brands showcasing their products who are incubated under Shenzhen InnoX. Now here, let me tell you one fun fact. So Shenzhen InnoX is founded by Mr. Li and the founders of the brand DJI were the students of Mr. Li and later once the DJI brand becomes much more popular, Mr. Lee decided to build a new brand for incubating smart hardware companies and that's how Shenzhen InnoX started. And the good part is, in the Maker Fair Shenzhen, we were having a satellite event in which we were allowed to explore the Shenzhen InnoX incubation center and get to see the innovations they have developed so far. So now, let me take you to that space. So here, we get to see a lot of innovative products, so let me try to cover some of them here. So at first, we get to see this cat dryer. Now, this thing might not be relatable to me as an Indian who is not a cat parent. But the fact in China is they have more cats in their home as compared to kids. So they definitely need to have a couple of products for cats as well. And this was one of them. Later, we get to see a really compact cloth dryer that helps us to dry the clothes completely in just 15 minutes. After that, we get to see this hair dryer and the cool thing about it is it dries our hair with light and not heat which we get to see in the regular hair dryers. Now drying our hair with the heat damages the hair quality so the makers of this product came up with this innovative idea to dry the hair with the help of the light so that it doesn't damage our hair quality. A innovative product for sure. Further ahead, we get to see a stringless guitar and it also got an app for it through which anyone can play the guitar quite quite easily without having a prior knowledge. Next up, we were having a huge power bank and this one is for your EV car. So it can not just charge your phone, laptops and other electronic gadgets, but it can charge your EV car as well. So I think this product will be in great demand in just near future. And further, we were having a DJI drone as well and of course, why not? As DJI is also a part of this incubation center. Well, after moving ahead, we get to see a small washing machine which is made just for your expensive sneakers. So this is also the need of the hour as many of the people own uh, expensive sneakers and they don't want to damage the quality of the sneakers by washing them in the regular washing machine. So yeah, we have a special washing machine just for your shoes. Well, later, we get to see another product just for cats. And again, as I'm not a cat parent, I cannot relate this thing, but the maker said that uh, many of the people in China have multiple cats, okay? And cats have a nature to not share their own food, right? So they came up with an innovative solution about how we can feed multiple cats with their separate food. So what they do is they give a different RFID belt to each cat and later the feeder will detect the tag and serve the food for that cat only. Now when the other cat tries to eat the food, well feed automatically changes the food so each cat will get the unique food. And well this product won the best innovation award in CES 2025. 
cool, right? Then we were having the device which can let us focus on our work and keep us away from using the phone. So it's like we, if we pick our phone while working, the device will start making annoying noise and to make the device stay quiet, we need to put our phone back on it. Interesting device, right? And later moving ahead, we get to see an automatic massager roller and a bunch of other innovative products. So this incubation center really got a lot of cool and innovative products. And I definitely recommend you to follow their Instagram page just to stay updated about what kind of new and innovative products they are developing. And after that long day of exploring innovation, now it's the time for Maker Party. So here we were having an open stage where people can sing, dance or maybe show their unique talents. And and as this party was organized by makers, we also get to see a really interesting stuff here. So this time, the Seed Studios team came up with this amazing NFC badge in which we can register our name and other details on the platform. And next time, whenever someone tap the phone on the badge, they can get all our details in the phone. And not only that, we can also you know, change the knob and we can have four different kind of NFC badges you can say to share four different kind of information. <laughs> well, I really like this idea and also the efforts that Seed Studios team are putting behind building this amazing stuff. So big thumbs up to the team. And yeah, with this, I come to the end of the Maker Fest Shenzhen 2025 day one video. Now this event is really very big to be covered in just single day. So yeah, we do have one more day left. And in the day two, I explored a lot of innovation. So definitely stay tuned for the Maker Fest Shenzhen 2025 day two video, which I'll be soon publishing on this YouTube channel. Until then, you let me know in the comments about which was that one thing which you liked the most out of this Maker Fest Shenzhen Day 1 video. And also you can check out the comments to see which thing which I like the most in the Day 1. So yeah, let's have interesting conversation below. And yeah, with that being said, I'm just ending this video here and now just wait for my next video and then explore, learn, share with me, Eki SMS.